Hello guys, this is Kathik from exilautomation.com and this is part 9 of our understanding mock video series. And in this part, we are going to talk about strict and loose mock. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 since this part will have some similarities from that part. Strict versus loose mock. With mock, we can make our test to be strict as well as loose. It's all up to you. Meaning the strict mock, if the setup for a mock object or a call is not done, then the exception is raised by the mock framework. But in loose mock, there won't be any exception raised, but it just runs fine if the verification is being satisfied. So using strict mock, we can make our test even more robust and brittle. If still the concept is not very clear, then let me flip to Visual Studio and show you what it is. So this is the same code which we have been discussing so far in this particular video series. And here what I have did is I have created a instance for a concrete class EMP PF details and I have passed the mock object mock EMP personal details by using the mock instance variable. And then I have called the get PF employer contribution method and I am passing any value for this particular method as a parameter and then I'm verifying the get duration word. So if I try to run this particular code, you can see that the test method will pass. And what I'm going to do is let's navigate to this particular get PF employer contribution so far method. And you can see that we have a duration worked method by using this get duration worked. And then we have a get employee salary method. But what we are doing is we are just trying to check this get duration worked method alone. But even for this particular checking, we are just checking if this particular method is being called or not. But we are not even setting up any values and verifying if this value is really returning from this particular method or not. So we are not doing any kind of setups here. So this kind of operation is called as loose mock. So instead of doing this way, if we want to make our mock to a strict mock so that we set up what kind of written value this particular method has to return. And if I call this particular method, then it should also consider about this get employee salary method as well, since this particular method has got these two methods within it. And we are checking these two methods as well. So this is called as strict mock. So in order for making your mock as a strict mock, the only very simple stuff that you need to do is just go here to the particular I employ personal details mock object and then pass the mock behavior dot strict. So making this will make your mock as a strict mock. And now if I try to run this particular code, you can see that the test method will fail. And it says that the I employ personal details that get duration worked invocation failed with the mock strict, meaning this particular method will fail. The reason is we have not did any setup here. So what I'm going to do is if I make this a small setup here uh, using the setup method and then I'm going to pass the x dot get duration worked with it dot is any of integer and I'm going to set a return values of maybe 20. And now if I try to run this particular code, you can still see the test will fail because the get employee salary method is not called yet. So we have to set up that one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. And instead of get duration work method, I'm going to call the get employee salary as well. And now if I try to run this particular code, you can see that the test will pass. So only if you do a setup operation for both the dependent methods, which is available in this particular get PF employee contribution so far method, only then the test will get passed, else the test will fail. And this functionality is called as strict mock. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.